million Americans. Starting today, hearing aids will cost thousands of dollars less than before. President Biden's executive order on competition called on the FDA to make hearing aids available over the counter without a prescription. That is now a reality. This week, retailers across the country, including Walgreens, CVS, Best Buy, Walmart, Hive, and Hy-Vee, will start selling over-the-counter hearing aids in-store and online. And adults with mild to moderate hearing loss can buy these hearing aids without a prescription, exam, or even fitting, which will lower average cost by as much as $3,000. That's thousands of dollars going back into the pockets of Americans and providing a little more breathing room in their family budgets as well. Finally, President Biden looks forward to welcoming President Herzog of Israel to the White House on October 26, a visit that underscores the un enduring partnership and friendship between the United States and Israel. They will consult on key issues, including regional and global challenges of mutual concern, opportunities to deepen Israel's regional integration, and ways to advance equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and security for both Israelis and Palestinians. President Herzog will be in Washington October 25th and 26th for meetings with a range of interagency officials. With that, Darlene, you want to kick us off? Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to start by asking, is the president aware of the comments that Donald Trump made yesterday about American Jews uh, basically saying that they're ungrateful and they better get their act together, appreciate what they have before it's too late? Given that the White House weighed in pretty uh, forcefully last week to the racist comments by the Los Angeles City Council members, would the White House um, denounce uh, these anti-Semitic comments by the former president as well? So Donald Trump's comments were anti-Semitic, as you all know, and insulting, both to Jews and to our Israeli allies. But let's be clear, for years, for years now, Donald Trump has aligned with extremists and anti-Semitic figures. And it should be, it should be called out, to your point, Darlene, just like we called out our Democratic uh, friends and colleagues last week, and we will condemn and call this out as well. So we need to root out anti-Semitism everywhere. It rears its ugly head. We need to call this out. With respect to Israel, our relationship is ironclad, and it's rooted in shared values and interests. Donald Trump clearly doesn't understand that either. Okay. Uh, just to follow up on that, it was announced earlier today that the rapper formerly known as Kanye West wants to buy the, cons the conservative social media platform Parler. Um, and this comes after he was kicked off of Twitter and Instagram last week for his own set of anti-Semitic comments. Is the White House or the President concerned that uh, should this sale go ahead and that Ye be allowed to buy this platform, that it will give him a, another venue for anti-Semitic comments, hateful comments, with no, you know, no gatekeeper, no one to say that's wrong or anything like that. So, as you know, when it comes to these types of purchases uh, or agreements, I can't speak to that. Um, so that's not something the actual, you know, uh, agreement or inter interaction. I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is hateful rhetoric. What I can speak to uh, is insulting rhetoric. When I can't, what I can't speak can speak to is anti-Semitism, which is hateful. It is dangerous, uh, and uh, we are going to continue to condemn that type of language because, at the end of the day, it is disgusting, and it is there is no room, absolutely no room, no place in our political discourse to be having that type of really vile uh, conversation or comments being made. President Biden hasn't attended any rallies or events in public in support of candidates in recent weeks. With the midterms just three weeks away, will we begin to see him do that more? What was what will his schedule look like? Wait, can you wait? Can you say your first part? He hasn't attended any rallies or public facing events with candidates in recent weeks. What will his schedule look like in the coming weeks as the midterm take closer? Um, so I have to be careful because I can't, we do uh, 
we do respect the Hatch Act and, uh, and our strict limits from here, so I want to be very, very clear, careful. Uh, but I would point you to this, the President's most recent uh, trip to out west, so it's kind of a bizarre uh, question to ask because he was very uh, visible last this weekend and last week. Uh, he was out there, and again, I cannot speak uh, to specific uh, uh, you know elections or campaigns or actions that he's he's taken. But all I will do is point you to his West Coast trip most recently. As far as um, upcoming trips, we've announced that he's going to go to Pennsylvania. We've announced that he's going to go to Florida. He was just in Colorado, Oregon, and California. Uh, and uh, don't don't have more beyond uh, the next two trips uh, that I have just laid out. Uh, and uh, he's going to be out there with uh, congressional Democrats and elected uh, Democrats to continue to talk about how uh, uh, congressional Democrats and the president has delivered for the American people when it comes to lowering cost, uh, when it comes comes to making sure that we're creating jobs right here in America uh, when it comes to what we just announced today with hearing aids. Uh, so he is he is proud uh, of the work that we have done here and he's going to continue to talk and make sure to talk about it uh, in states uh, and make sure that the American people hear directly from him. A lot, a lot of the places that you mentioned um, were private fundraisers or official events. Um, will we be seeing him uh, appear alongside candidates in public? Is that intentional to not have him uh, do stumping with these candidates and supporting his party? Again, I'm going to be very careful about what I say uh, about ongoing elections. I am restricted here, but I will point you uh, to uh, Portland, Oregon. I will point you to L.A., uh, California, uh, where he was uh, out there with um, uh, with his uh, with fellow Democrats uh, talking about uh, how we have delivered in the past 19, 20 months. Well, we see him in public with the candidate, the trips, upcoming trips that you've mentioned with with uh, John Fetterman, Charlie Crist when he was in Florida. Um, will cameras be allowed into his events? Will we see him alongside these? I'm not going to go into the details of what these events are going to look like, uh, but we were very clear when we announced Pennsylvania this week that he is going to be uh, with Lieutenant Governor uh, Fetterman. Thanks, Preet. Does the White House have a reaction to Russia's latest drone strikes against Kyiv? Yeah, so we have talked about Russia's uh, escalation and have been uh, very clear about what uh, what is uh, what is going to continue to happen. Uh, the most recent escalation, uh, the United States strongly condemns uh, Russia's missile strikes today, uh, which continue to demonstrate Putin's brutality. Uh, as you know, President Biden and the G7 leaders met with President Zelensky last week, and President Biden also spoke with President Zelensky one-on-one -on -one the day before uh, that G7 uh, conversation. We are in daily touch with the Ukrainians across the administration, from the National Security Advisor to the Department of Defense and the Department Department of State. On Friday, we announced an additional $725 million in security package for Ukraine to provide critical needs for, its def for it to defend itself, continue to defend itself and bravely. Uh, and uh, last week, Secretary of, Defense, uh, of the Secretary of Defense Austin brought together 50 defense ministers to announce more security support for Ukraine, including air defense uh, capabilities. We will continue, we will, as we have said over the past several months, to stand with the people of Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, we, are going to, we are going to continue to work with our allies and partners. Uh, we will continue to impose costs on Russia, hold them accountable and uh, for its war crimes, as we've talked about, you've heard directly from the president uh, on the war crimes piece and its atrocities, and providing Ukraine with security, economic, and humanitarian assistance. The uh, president said on Saturday that he thought uh, Prime Minister Truss's initial economic plan was a mistake. Uh, her new finance minister has announced a pretty complete U-turn um, on those plans. Does the White House welcome that? So, like the president said, you were there. Uh, you you may have asked him the question. I'm not a hundred. <laughs> Uh, so, like the president said this past Saturday, uh, the question that uh, Jeff may or may not have asked uh, is up to the UK to make these judgments. Uh, it is really up to them uh, to decide what is right uh, for their, um, you know, for their own constituents, right, for their country. Uh, the UK is a close ally, as you've heard us say many times, and we work with them on a range of issues, including strengthening uh, the global economy. Our focus is on the long term, as we have said many times, which is growth and investment and increased manufacturing, as you've seen the work that we have done here in 
Congress and the President with the CHIPS Act, making sure that we are making, uh, uh, making things right here in America. And not only that, we have created about 700,000 manufacturing jobs right here uh, in America in the past 19, 20 months. So, uh, and also the fiscal discipline that is leading to, to more jobs, as I just laid out, and rising incomes and raise, rising incomes as we have focused on, and we'll make our economy stronger and more resilient as we have seen because of the work, because of the work uh, that this president has done when it comes to his economic plan. Okay. Just um, on the back to the drone uh, attacks, does the this administration believe that we are entering a new phase of the, the war in Ukraine? So I'm, I'm not going to go into any analysis uh, about where we are in this war. Um, we have been very clear about how we saw, how, how we've been seeing uh, Russia's, uh, Russia's escalation uh, over the past several weeks. And so, uh, you know, what we will do is to continue to support uh, the people of Ukraine. What we will do is to make sure that uh, they have what they need to continue their brave, uh, the way that they are fighting bravely uh, on the ground. We just announced, as I just mentioned, $725 million of new uh, assistance just this past Friday. We are in regular touch uh, with Ukrainians uh, the, in the administration, the government, uh, as we as I mentioned, National Security Advisor and others uh, in, in the administration are, are continuing to talk, uh, have close conversations about their needs. And so that's going to continue. Uh, we will be in this for as long as it takes. And we've been very clear about this as well. This war can end today. This is a war that can end right now today if, uh, if, if Vladimir Putin wants it to. This is his war. He started this war. Two uh, quick political questions. Um, as the president uh, prepares to appear with John Fetterman later this week uh, in Pennsylvania, um, there's obviously, as you know, been a lively debate over Fetterman's health following his stroke. Do you know if the president uh, believes there's any sort of reason for concern on that point specifically? So uh, again, because it's connected to the uh, to his to his election, um, I want to be really careful. The Hatch Act it's something that we do respect. Uh, and adhere to here, but speaking only about the president's uh, um, personal conversation with Lieutenant Governor Fetterman, uh, the president has found him to be an impressive individual, and uh, who is just as capable as all, who has been, who's just as capable as always, and who is who's carrying out his office. He's currently the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania, as we know, and he's doing that with great ability and heartfelt concern for the people of the Commonwealth. So yes, the president. The president feels that he is he is very much capable of doing the job. Sorry, you said that was based on a recent conversation of the two of them. Well, they've had they've met many times, as you know. Most recently, I th I believe on Labor Day may have been the last time that they've seen each other in person, uh, and they're going to see each other again, as you know, this Thursday. But the president and uh, Lieutenant Governor Fetterman have had m uh, many interactions over the past several months. And then just my second political question: um, the end of last week, the president said that his reaction to the Herschel Walker controversy in Georgia was negative. wondered if you wanted to elaborate on that? No, I'm going to just let the president's words stand. I'm not going to uh, elaborate on that from here. Okay. Hey, Green, thanks. I have a question about hearing aids, but first I wanted to take a stab at the question from earlier. Um, the president has called this the most significant election, or one of the most significant elections uh, with abortion rights, voting rights being on the ballot, and a lot of the gains you touted from the, from the podium. Um, and you know he's spending this weekend at his vacation home in in Rehoboth, according to the schedule you guys release. I wonder if you can talk about the calculus there, 16 days before the election, especially during a year when you guys have said Biden would be getting out into the country more, counting the gains that you guys have made. So last week we spent four days out in the country, right? We left on Wednesday, came back Saturday night. To be more specific, 2 a.m. on Sunday. Some of us walked into our house at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Um, and the week before that, he spent four days uh, out into the country. Uh,